So once again, I'm delighted to be with you this morning to celebrate this Mass, the annual Mass. It used to be called the White Mass, but we've got for the white coats and the white uniforms. Right? So it's nice to see a white coat there, Doctor, thank you. Uh, the, uh, that, that importance of praying for those who serve us in the health care profession. I do want to thank those who are here today in a very special way, and once again, the Catholic Medical Association. And, and uh, to also to you know, assure you of our prayers and, and our uh, uh, presence with you as a faith community, especially in, this, in these very, very challenging times. I mean, providing medical care, is, I'm sure, is never easy in any time in history. But uh, it's always a very, very stressful thing, too. I have a very close friend who was recently retired as a cardiologist, and she raised her family on the means of this, and I, I just couldn't believe the, the level of stress that she endured with the phone calls and the being on call. But that's all compounded in these, with reimbursement challenges as well. can only imagine what that's all like, dealing with insurance companies and worried about how many patients you need to see and the pressure that's there from a financial standpoint. But you Catholics in the healthcare professional, God bless you as well for seeking to integrate your faith with the work of health care. That's not easy to do. It's increasingly difficult as we're pressured to compromise our moral principles. So in, in a sense, you who are Catholic healthcare professionals are warriors for the truth, not only in providing the highest quality of, of, of health care and, and, and with great compassion and zeal, but to do so in a, man, in a manner that's consistent with the teachings of our faith so that you can, in conscience, continue to do what you do, that you're to be prayed for, for sure, and commended. So thank you for your witness of faith uh, in, in the world today. And, in ways that are seen, I'm sure, from time to time, but in so many that are unseen. So, we're very grateful for your witness. And in the Gospel today, we, we have this wonderful scene where, where it seems that that word that we heard in the letter to the Hebrews can become our word. You know, where the author of the letter of the Hebrews talks about the high priest. He's able to sympathize and be compassionate with people and they're struggling, they're erring in their confusion, their struggles, because he himself is beset with weakness. And I think there's a truth in that for each one of us. We're all in one way or another beset with weakness, whether it's a physical weakness or a struggle in that way, or emotionally, spiritually, a struggle with virtue. Beset with weakness, we call out to Jesus Christ as well. Just like Bartimaeus did, beside, on the side of the road begging, he hears that Jesus is passing through, and he's insistent on this. He can't be discouraged as he begins to call out to the Lord, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. People tell him to be quiet, not to bother the Lord, but beset with weakness, Bartimaeus cries out. And much to his surprise, and to the surprise of others, Jesus hears him. Jesus stops and says, call him. Jesus hears when we call out to him. Especially from our weakness and our vulnerability, from that place in our lives where we know we need him the most. Call him. And so they come and get him. Take courage. Get up. Jesus is calling you. And so Bartimaeus goes to him. And then he hears these words that I think every person would long to hear from Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Now, I invite you, answer that question for yourself. Jesus calls you and says, what do you want me to do for you? Today, this morning, whatever your life situation is, keeping in mind that it's especially in our weakness, where we need him the most, he says, come over to me. What do you want me to do for you? That's how close our God is to us in our needs, in our struggles, in our vulnerabilities. He's right there with us. And that's what Jesus, I think, I'm, I'm confident, wants us each to feel that nearness as we continue with this celebration. The Word of God really invites us to be there in that conversation that Jesus has with Bartimaeus. And of course, Bartimaeus says simply, Master, I want to see. I want to see. 
He wants to be healed of his blindness, yes, but you know, there's a, pro- a deeper, even more profound meaning to that request of Jesus, I think. I want to see, I want to see, yes, to be able to move about in a normal way, that kind of physical healing. But deep within every human heart, there is that longing to see the long view, to see the truth, to see what life is all about, to see what our destiny is. And I think that Bartimaeus, for all of us, is asking Jesus that. I want to see. I want to see you ultimately, Jesus. And Jesus heals him. Why? Because he has faith. Go your way. Your faith has saved you. And what does Bartimaeus do? Having received his sight, we're told simply, he follows him on the way. He follows Jesus. The seeing has found what it's looking for, right? Bartimaeus' heart senses in Jesus the answer to that, what he really longs to see. And in fact, that's what we are all destined to do to follow Jesus on the way. It requires faith that Bartimaeus has to see that, to follow him. And having encountered Jesus in that place in our lives, knowing that while he may not answer the way we hope or the way we expect, he nevertheless hears us. And God's answer to our prayers, if we trust in him and have faith, is always oh so much better than what we have perhaps requested more specifically for God to do. But nevertheless, He hears us and He's with us, and that makes all the difference so that we can follow Him along the way. And we know that that way inevitably includes suffering. It's about taking up the cross and following in His footsteps. We know that. But trusting in Jesus, surrendering to Him, we know that He's leading to that vision of the kingdom of God that has conquered sin and death. One that Jeremiah describes in the first reading today, that, that beautiful image of the the children of Israel returning to Jerusalem from exile. The Lord has delivered His people. I bring them back. I will gather them from the ends of the earth, the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them and lead them, and none are left behind. Brooks of water, level road, none shall stumble. I am a father to Israel. That's the kingdom. Jeremiah is seeing in that historical fact of the Jewish people returning to their homeland what God ultimately is doing for all of us. And the way is to that reality, to the kingdom. To follow Jesus along the way then is to see that as our goal, our destiny. But there's work to be done along the way, isn't there? Jesus doesn't simply lead us there immediately, but rather we follow him and we encounter others and situations and opportunities that as Christians, having been touched by the Lord and caught by that vision and seeking to follow him on the way, we, each one of us, can reflect that in our own actions and our own choices and our priorities in how we would be willing to stop to talk to Bartimaeus to be able to bring hope to a situation where there seems to be hopelessness, light to darkness, just by our presence, by our responsiveness. Now, I can't help but, but think about how people, men and women who work in the healthcare profession, you do this all the time. This is your life's work, it's your vocation to hear Bartimaeus and to bring the healing presence in whatever you can do the greatest works of science or the simple response of accompanying someone through their suffering and their pain. You do it in a way that really challenges us and bears witness to God's intervention into our world. The power of the kingdom breaking through through the miracle of healing and medical science. It's all part of God's vision. We glimpse the kingdom, God's transcendent plan and some of the miracles that we have through medicine. But hope, hope is what ultimately is God's gift and a glimpse of the future for each of us. Now, my brothers and sisters, if if we're touched by Jesus in that place in our lives where we are beset with weakness, where we're looking for Jesus 
to lead us to hear our prayer. And we are able then to follow him a little bit better along the way. We all need to be thinking about how God wants to use us. How he wants us to be light. How he wants us to bring that presence, that compassion, that healing, that listening ear, that patience, that willingness to perhaps be an instrument of peace and communion in the midst of so much struggle in our world. A lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are confused. A lot of people are very angry, disillusioned. We see it in all that's happening politically, whatever. So much suffering and pain in the world. As Christians, we need to be conscious that if we're following Jesus along the way, we have to reflect Him. We have to mirror the the mercy of Jesus, the heart of Jesus. To follow Him along the way, having been touched there ourselves, how can we reveal His face? Those who serve us in the healthcare professions, you, you do that in a very practical and a wonderful way every day. I mean, it's, as I said earlier, great challenges. And we're so grateful for that. We all are called to do that. Following Jesus and being His presence and light. And my brothers and sisters, as we continue through this Mass, again, we have met Jesus by the road here He is with us very powerfully. He does indeed say to us, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And what does it mean then for our faith to keep us on the road and like Bartimaeus, follow him on the way? God bless you.